It is 2026 and you still don't have a portfolio. It's most likely because you just started designing, don't have any case studies to show, or you are simply lazy. If this sounds like you, today is your lucky day, because by the end of this video, you will have a world-class portfolio website without touching a single pixel. In this video, I will design the website and then walk you through step by step how to use the framer template I created for you, so you don't need any experience in design or framer. I will start with a blank canvas set to 1200 pixels. The reason I used 1200 instead of a different width is that a higher percentage of users browse on laptops rather than large desktop screens. We always want to prioritize the screens used by most people. Next, I will choose this color palette. As you can see, it's very soft and uses only one hue. We want to emphasize the designer's work and avoid distracting visitors with unnecessary colors. Now let's add a headline on the left, followed by a sub-headline and a few benefits with some icons. At the top, I will add a logo with a name and at the bottom, two buttons, you'll notice that I'm using recognizable icons like Gmail and Google Meet. The reason for this is simple, people trust what they recognize. Also notice that the text isn't aligned to the top or to the bottom. That is intentional and based on mental models. Here is a new X article about this if you want to learn more. Moving on, I will add a grid layout to the website. This reflects a designer's workflow and works as a clean decorative element. On the right side, I will place the projects. The goal of this website it is to avoid traditional case studies. I know most of you don't have them and probably don't plan to create them. So the layout is optimized in a way that they are not even necessary. Think of this website as being more like Dribble and less like Behance. Here you have a project title and a button that can link to a Figma file, a Notion page or somewhere else. That said, it's usually not a good idea to send users away from your website unless it is to book a call or send you an email. That's why later in this video I will show you how to remove this button if you don't want to push your visitors outside your website. As you can see, only the right side of the website is scrollable, while the left side stays fixed. The goal here is to keep everything in one place without overwhelming the user. Users can scroll through your work and immediately take action without excessive animations, long text or cognitive overload that eventually makes them forget why they came to your website in the first place. And this setup is also great for you. All you need to do is upload screenshots of your best work and you are good to go. I recommend posting at least three projects and no more than nine because people are gonna have to scroll for too long on a mobile device. On mobile, the website looks a bit different. Remember when I said we should prioritize the most common screen sizes? That is exactly why. On mobile, we can split the layout the same way we do on laptops, because the screen is too small. Everything needs to be stacked vertically. We also remove certain elements like button labels, why? Because space is limited and our goal is to provide the best possible mobile experience without clutter or confusion. And now it's time to explain you how to use this framer template. I'm not going to explain how to edit the text because that part is pretty obvious. Instead, let's start with the things you shouldn't do. In the right sidebar, you'll notice some elements that are locked. This should stay locked unless you are very familiar with Framer. These elements include the grids and the squares you see right here. They use absolute positioning and if you move them, there is a high chance you'll break the layout. So make sure you don't touch any locked layers. To change the text on a button, simply click on it and on the right side, type whatever you want in the title field. And below that, you can add a link. If you want to change the icon, double click on the button, select the icon, delete it and then paste a new one. Now let's look at how to add or remove projects. Go to the CMS, you will see four existing projects. If you click on any of them, you can easily edit the content inside. If you want to delete a project, you just right click on it and select delete. To create a new project, right click and choose new item or simply click on this button right here. This part is important. At the top, add the title of your project. 
try to keep it short, no long words and no more than 4 words. You can ignore the slug, then move to the image field where you can upload an image or a GIF. Now for the most important setting, if you don't want to send people away from your website like I mentioned before, set this option to no and the button will disappear. But in case if you do want to link to a Figma file or something else, add your link here and choose a button label. Again, keep the text as short as possible. Now let's move on to the Google and SEO settings. Click on this icon to open site settings, then go to general, add your site title, this will be your name, then add a short site description. Here upload both a dark and a light favicon. And then below add a logo or a screenshot of your website. For the final step, make sure you connect a custom domain that is important for Google ranking, trust and your personal branding. Framer has a tutorial that shows exactly how to do this, so I recommend following that. You can find the remix link of this Framer and Figma file on my Patreon page. It's completely free and you don't need to be subscribed.